the religion has nothing to do with what Muslims eat. Nothing. It doesn't say anything about what you can eat uh, when it comes to meat. Look, yes, I know the, the alcohol, the, the pork, alcohol, these things are mentioned. But this beef, onion, salad, mayonnaise, these things are not mentioned there. I was the first imam in Australia to call for a female mufti for the Australian National Imams Council. Good. And you say, Tawhidi, what the hell are you doing hugging the Christian and the Jew and you're eating food with, with, with the Buddhist? What's going on, man? I say, look in the Quran. It's in the Quran. Love your brother what you love, love each other. It's there. Love and, and care. Look, look, Habib, you're not going to burn in hell, okay? <laughs> God didn't, didn't make hell to burn people. When people like you are told that you're going to go to hell. That's not going to happen. Why? Because what you have done is that you have expressed your opinion. And you have expressed your opinion based on how you think. And how you think is based on the brain that you have. And the brain was given to you by God. You cannot be put in hell because of the way your brain functions, which was given to you by God. You have an opinion. You don't deserve to be attacked or killed for that opinion. Uh, and murder killing, lying, uh, raping, these are all acts that constitute disbelief. So disbelief doesn't mean uh, you're rejecting God, because if you were rejecting God, you wouldn't even be bothering to read the Quran in the first place, or even listen to what the Prophet Muhammad has to say at that time. It's because disbelief here doesn't mean rejection of the monotheistic being of God. It actually means all of these wrong actions which lower the status of the human being being a believer and then slowly slowly towards being a tyrant who doesn't believe in God. One of the names of Ali ibn Abi Talib is Kitab. La rayba fi huda lil muttaqeen. The Prophet used to name Ali ibn Abi Talib Imam al-Muttaqeen. Al-Ladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb wa yuqimuna al-salat wa mimma razaqnaahum yunfiqoon. Ali ibn Abi Talib was the one who gave the sadaqa and who gave the zakah while in prayer. So that's like and those who believe in what was revealed for you, this here is referring to the Quran, four verses down the track. For those of you celebrating uh, Christmas, Merry Christmas. Our, our Orthodox and Coptic friends, Armenians, all of those celebrating Christmas today, peace be upon you all and Merry Christmas. No shame and no dignity. Shave your beards off. You don't deserve to look like men. Disgusting people. How can you do that? How on earth can you do that? And by the way, shave your beards off is a statement for the Arabs. They're ma mainly the Imams are Arabs. According to Arabic tradition, the beard is something uh, very... Ma he's manly, you know. That's why they have beards. I have it because I don't want to... Uh, Apparently, I look very skinny without a beard. My wife likes it. That's why I have a beard. I haven't had a beard in my life for, for a while. But yeah. Point is, you're the ones who grow big, big beards like this. Like this, you know? Like this, they're open in half. The Quran itself so his states... His is wrong. Definitely wrong. The Quran itself says there's no hatred in religion whatsoever. This is the I know, Islam I've seen I, that verse. Yes, that's the Islam I it's believe in. This. It's the enemy of Fatima. Fatima had many enemies. Who was the main enemy of Fatima? Omar, who killed Fatima. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before accepting Fatima and loving Fatima, he has to hate and reject the opposite of Fatima. This entire universe only exists because of la'anat bar Omar. This is why we exist. Because Allah hated Omar, and loved Fatima, created Fatima, because of her, Muhammad and Ali, because of Muhammad, the planets and the sun and the earth, and because of that we exist. Another issue is that uh, the brother said that we, if you believe in Islam, and if you believe in it to be true, then a Muslim would spread the religion of Islam because they believe it to be true. Uh, firstly, we need to understand that religion came to serve humanity, not to serve Muslims or to ser or, or to to serve God. Okay, religion does not serve God. 
uh, the way you you framed it is that if I believe in God and if you allow me a bit more time if I believe in God and if I believe in God's message is true the, the Holy Quran then I need to teach this book and spread it right? this is wrong this is serving God religion was not sent down to serve God religion serves me <laughs> yes, to, to worship, no problem. But that is not the purpose of. Are you telling me that your purpose is only to pray and uh, pray to God, worship that God? That verse is addressing all of humanity as a whole. Yes, their purpose. Uh, no problem. So you can. But you're uh, saying the opposite. You're saying that no, the no, purpose no. of humanity is not to worship God. Did not say All humanity. I know that's my point. Exactly. <laughs> This comes from a context of God wanting to serve. I'm an imam. I serve my religion. Why? Because it serves humanity. The, my organization... I believe in serving humanity okay. as well. My organization... Part of serving humanity is to inform humanity yeah. of their creator. My organization right. serves humanity. So I serve my organization. I don't serve my God. My religion is here to serve, serve me. God? No, my religion is here to serve me. You don't care about serving no, God? No, the moment, the moment religion wants to kill and butcher, then we go against that belief system. Religion needs... Religion, when it emerges, what does it say? We are here to make your life better. We are here to make you better people. They're here to serve us. Prophets are, 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 are servants of humanity. We, we, we don't serve God. God doesn't need me. God doesn't need me to, to worship and, and go, uh, you know, promote him. He does. He has a, he's a king. He has everything. He's an atheist. That's a good point for you now. <laughs> no, God doesn't need me. Why am I here serving God? I don't need it. That's why all caliphates and theocracies are, are corrupt. And that's why Muhammad never had a government. Now, I think you're outing yourself. <laughs> come, coming back, and by the way, many people will say, why don't you send peace and blessings on the Prophet? Because I'm not in an Islamic show. Uh, I would do it if we were in a mosque. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad was never successful. Until his deathbed, he was never successful. Because he couldn't even get them to bring him a paper and pen. They said, you're talking nonsense. Brother Daniel, brother Daniel, you see, I got him, I got him. You are criticizing a system that we have today. We call it, we're calling it modern uh, modernity. But it's a system, of, a set of policies. Because you believe that the earlier ones in Islam were the best. They were the worst. The first uh, question, very simple, uh, is, the, is the Quran uh, perfect? Uh, the answer is clearly no. Firstly, I question. I question everything in the Quran. Uh, Brother Mufassal says that you can't question. And like I said, the term questioning differs in context. That's the Arabic language. I mean, you, you're, you're an Arab uh, yourself. So you would know the, the context of the word uh, yes, al, yet asa al, to uh, question, to question. Your, your mother tongue is Arabic. Yes, right. yes, and therefore, uh, if you look at Surah Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, which is the biggest chapter of the Quran, God says, "Inni ja'alu fil ardi khalifa." I am placing yeah. an ambassador on earth. The angels, who in theology uh, don't have free will, angels don't have free will. Angels only obey God, and that's why we say she's an angel. He's an angel because everything is so good. They don't have free will. Angels do not have free will. What angels have is that they are obedient. But even when angels do not have free will, what they do is they turn around and they question God. And in the Quran, they said, God, are you really going to create a human being, Adam, whose children and lineage are going to spread corruption and shed blood on this earth? And God turned around and said, no, I know what you do not know. Don't interfere in what I wish to do. 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 Now, this clearly shows you that one can have a dialogue with God. One can question God. The only time where in the Quran, uh, well, not the only time, but the, the many times that God says in the Holy Quran that you shouldn't question or that you can't question is that don't come to me on the Day of Judgment thinking I am not the witness and I'm not the judge. You cannot lie to me. I've already seen everything. That's the main concept when God says you cannot question me, unless you can quote a, a different verse. Well, I, I, will, I will de definitely disagree there. First of all, no, I, I don't think that's enough to say God never said to the angels, if, I, if my memory is serving me right, so do not interfere. He, he didn't use the term. 
Rather, no, I yes, never said that God I said do not interfere. Uh, Rather, no, I yes, never said that God I said do not interfere. Uh, and God turned around and said, No, I know what you do not know. Don't interfere in what I wish to do. Rather, no, yes, I never said that God I said think, do not interfere. The 10th of June was the holy month of Ramadan. We were still fasting as Muslims. And during the holy month of Ramadan, I as a practicing Muslim do not engage in conflicts or clashes with anyone, condemnation or anything of that like. But if you don't have any respect for yourself, do not expect people to respect you. Do you understand me? If you're a man, if you are a man, if you're a man, if you're the son of your father, if you're a real Arab, son of your father, and I'm an Arab, and you would know what that means. If you're the son of your dad, if you're a real man, if you're the son of your father, this queen is more pure than the wife of Prophet Muhammad Aisha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, the terrorist who you revere, is not worth the shoes of this queen. You see this queen? More honorable than your whole religion. You disgusting, disgusting person. If you're men, if you're the, the sons of your fathers, if you are men, if you have beards, you claim to be Arab warriors in this country, you think you're very knowledgeable, you're speaking about Islam. If you're a man, if you are a man, if you're a man, how your Khalifa, your Caliph was a terrorist or you're a hypocrite. All of you cowering, shivering like rabbits. Like you have no respect. Muhammad al muwahi you came from an area where they drink uh, milk from, from the camel directly. Ah. You don't even have two dollars where you came from. Wallah, you have no shame. You have no shame. Wallah, you have no shame. You have no shame. You have no dignity. You have no respect. You have no morals. You, you don't even have ethics. You don't know how to talk. You know, simple speech. You don't know how to talk properly. You think you're a man? You think you're tough? To this coward, you're a coward, and your council, 250 imams are all cowards. And the one who approves of you is a coward, and the one who prays behind you is a coward, and the congregation you lead are all cowards. These corrupt and filthy imams. You coward. You're a coward. The, the cowards that formed your, your faith. But you're a coward. Corrupt, filthy imam. Which one of these coward imams? You're a bunch of cowards, all of you. All of you are cowards. You have no shame and you have no dignity. How sick must you be? But you're a coward. You're a coward. The whole council are cowards. You don't have self-respect. You sick people. You have no dignity and you have no shame. How could you sleep at night? Because some corrupt imam. You're all criminals. What good have we seen from you? You corrupt imams. You wear your turbans like mushrooms. You have no shame. You disgusting people. You sick human beings. Are you human beings? Are you? I don't know. You have no shame. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> He's the tough guy. No shame whatsoever. No shame and no dignity. Shave your beards off. You don't deserve to look like men. Is you're the ones who grow big, big beards like this. Like this, you know? Like this, the open in half when, when you're riding a motorbike. You're the ones who, who claim to be the tough guys. But you have no shame. The father is corrupt. The imam is corrupt. The community is corrupt. The marriage celebrant is corrupt. I try to maintain the peacefulness that I preach, especially within the holy month of Ramadan. <laughs> and if you want to call Donald Trump a, a, a tyrant and a dictator and a white supremacist, let me make something very clear to you, Sister Linda Sarsour. Uh, this Donald Trump is a prophet and is an angel compared to your Muslim leaders back home. Is an angel compared to your prophet who is mentioned in the Bukhari, the homosexual uh, terrorist pedophile. This is your book. Come and condemn this book. Come and condemn this book and say the Muhammad in this Bukhari, the most sacred book after the Quran, doesn't represent me. Then we can open a dialogue about who is a tyrant and who is not a tyrant. And I hugged Christians and I laughed with Jews and we sat down and, and I mentioned Jews a lot because although this will get me in trouble, I've never said this before, but Palestine is Jewish land. I mean, come on, who doesn't know this? Jesus came to Jerusalem. He came to the Israelites who were there. It's Jewish land. I mean, if the Jews later on, later on want to become Christians, believe in Jesus, and then later on, later on they want to believe in Muhammad, that's fine, you can change your religion, but you can't change the, the history of the land. It's Jewish land. Which is maybe why I get along with Jews a lot. But 
when I say my, my version of Islam, we need to understand that Islam is not one big school of thought. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of 73 schools of thought. And my school of thought is a minority, a very, uh, probably the smallest school of thought out there. Are you seriously ignoring me? Fuck you, okay? And fuck your husband. I'm mentally disturbed. Fuck you, and fuck your husband.